Canon RF 35 millimeter 1.8. Here's my rapid fire list of the differences between the Canon RF 35 and the Sigma uh, EF 35 when it comes to video mode on the Canon EOS R. If you're debating between the two and you have a Canon EOS R, you might initially think, oh, I'm gonna get the RF because it's what the EOS R mount is. But there are some advantages that the EF lens has over the RF. You can get Canon's adapter, uh, EF to uh, EOS R adapter with a drop-in filter. This has a rotatable variable ND filter. Slap this on, you can shoot video, variable ND. The RF lens mount only works on two cameras right now, the EOS R and the RP. It doesn't work on any other cameras. Even with adapters, the RF lenses cannot work on any other cameras uh, as of right now. With the Sigma, you have a 1.4 versus the 1.8. You do not have image stabilization. You have image stabilization with the RF. The Sigma, you pay more, but you get a little bit more for your money. I have a UV filter on here. It doesn't come with the UV filter, but it ha comes with the caps. It comes with a lens hood, and it also comes with a pretty sturdy pouch, travel pouch here. You get all this uh, for, for $700, and the RF lens, the Canon RF lens, you just get this lens. That's it. You don't get any lens hood. You don't get any case, no pouch even. You just get this by itself. When it comes to the lens threads, this is a 67 millimeter lens thread. This is a 52 millimeter lens thread. The profile of this camera is not only heavier because the Sigma weighs 1.46 pounds or 665 grams and the Canon weighs 10.76 ounces or, or 305 grams. So the Sigma weighs over twice as much as the Canon. So if you don't like heavier glass, get go with the Canon. But anyways, here's how, how the profile looks like when you have the Sigma with the adapter mounted on the camera. Pretty, pretty big. Let's take this off now and let's put on the, the RF lens. This is a lot more compact. When it comes to autofocus, video, the RF is way smoother, very more accurate, and it, it's faster to focus. The Sigma EF 1.4, it feels slow in autofocus in, in video mode, and it also is louder. You can hear the autofocus motor going, whereas I can't really, I don't think I can hear it at all in the a Canon lens. The STM system is quiet. And so if you want quiet video, go with the RF 35. Also, because it's image stabilization, you'll notice the a wobbliness, the a shaky cam on using the Sigma that you don't see using the RF lens. This is 4K 30P. I have to shoot at f16 here, I'm at ISO 100 already. This is an image stabilized lens. This is the RF35 1.8. I am on a custom picture profile. Since I'm shooting in 4K, there is a crop. Now I'm shooting on the Sigma 35. 1.4, but I have the Canon EOS adapter with the drop-in ND filter on. Right now it's on the minimum ND, so I'm at an F8 instead of an F16. Now I'm going to show the benefits of the drop-in ND filter. I'm going to go to a high, a lower F stop. Now I'm at 1.6, uh, 1.4, but I'm gonna drop the ND now. Not even to its maximum. Yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe just a little bit. It's almost at its max, but I'm shooting at an F1.4 now. You can see the focus. 
focus is hunting more because it's a the uh, the the depth of field is so thin or shallow and also it could be because of the sigma lens is harder for to focus now I'm shooting in HD so you're seeing the full frame sensor of the 35 millimeter this is 1.4 on the Sigma I'm back on the RF 35 shooting at 1.8. This is HD, so you're seeing the full frame of the lens, full frame 35 millimeter. I don't hear the autofocus mirror or the image stabilization at all, and it looks like it's more stabilized too. The shallow depth of field isn't as much as the Sigma, but uh, it doesn't matter too much. Autofocus is really snappy. The great thing about this lens is that it is a macro lens, so I can get in fairly close. Wow, do you see that macro capabilities? Cannot do this with the Sigma.